listen to this. I invited some kids to write to me about their problems for my column this week. This is from a second grader named Russell. Dear Madeline, I want more cake. I want more cake. I want more cake. <laughs> Sincerely, Russell. <laughs> I love it. Doesn't that just about say it all for everybody? Oh, you sound terrible. You should go home. No, I gotta sell some more ads on the phone today. Anyway, I don't want to miss the debate. It's on in a few minutes. Listen, with all due respect, uh, I think your wife has bitten off more than she can chew here. I mean, once old Rush gets started on that Gloria Steinem gang, he's unrelenting. Billy Bob, I don't care about the Gloria Steinem gang. I just want it all to be over. I'm tired of talking about men and women and women and men and women and women and men and men and women and women and men and who cut what off and what it all means. I just think everybody should just pair off any way they want and shut the hell up. But just for the record, I don't think we have to worry about Georgie Ann being able to hold her own against that pompous, overrated windbag. We just can't take it because he's got you women nailed. Excuse me. You could take all the knowledge Rush Limbaugh has about women, put it in a flea's navel, and still have room for the entire Encyclopedia Britannica and my butt. People, please, can we all just try and get along? You heard him. Rodney King wants us to knock it off. <laughs> hey, everybody, I'm back from Tinseltown, and oh, let me tell you what an experience it was. Oh, first of all, I am totally exhausted from private jet lag. Lonnie, uh, we'd really love to hear about it, but in a few minutes, George is going to be on the radio with Rush Limbaugh. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, then I'll just get right to the point. You know, I wanted to go into some of those fancy shops on Rodeo Drive, but I had read how snotty those Beverly Hills sales clerks can be. So anyway, I just walked right into that Giorgio's, pulled out my wallet. I said, I have $1,000 here. You have 10 minutes to get me to spend it, and the fact that I do not yet have a cappuccino in my hand is not a good beginning. <laughs> Very clever. What's the deal with those pants? Well, anyway, after they kicked me out, I ended up over at this shop that recycles movie star clothes. I blew my thousand dollars on this jumpsuit. Can you believe it? It belonged to Elvis Presley. I mean, he didn't perform in it, but he had it made and then he changed his mind. I can see why it stinks. I know the pilots were complaining on the way back. I can't figure out what it is. Well, I can. It's B.O. Well, just get it out of here. Okay, but I wanted to wear it tonight to take pictures in at the prom since the theme is the 60s and all. So if it's all right with you, boss, I'd like to run it over to the one-hour Martinizing. Oh, that's a great idea. A little Martinizing on top of B.O. always takes the edge off. Okay, guys, be quiet. Here it is. For what should prove to be a very lively exchange between local journalist Georgie Ann Lottie and the great one himself, Mr. Rush Limbaugh. Welcome to you both. Thank you, Thank Ted. You, Ted. Well, I think everyone knows why we're here, so let's just get right to it, shall we? Miss Lottie, you wrote in your editorial that Mr. Limbaugh is the single most divisive person in America today. Wrong on women, gays, welfare, the environment, reproductive rights, and just basically, hopelessly, irretrievably wrong on every opinion that comes out of his multi-million dollar mouth. Do you still stand by that? Yes, I do. But of course, nobody's all bad. I mean, I'm sure there's other things one could find to appreciate in him. Really? Like what? Well, I don't know, like his smile. You like Rush Limbaugh's smile? Well, it does make up for a stand on women in combat, but it's <clears throat> nice. What about you, Rush? Well, Ted, I like Georgie's smile, too, but I don't think women have any place in the battlefield. Except maybe for Lorena Bobbitt. Give her a bayonet and send her out about ten minutes ahead of the other guys. <laughs> you were laughing, Miss Lottie. You find that funny? Well, it's a little funny, but not very. Are you kidding? It's hilarious. I'm right about women in combat and gays and welfare and the environment, reproductive rights. I'm hopelessly, irretrievably right 97.2% of the time. Well, then what about Hillary Clinton, Miss Lottie? Rush says that she talks a good game, but has, in fact, uh, hitched a ride on her husband's coattails, and where would she be without him? My guess is about two doors down in the Oval Office. <laughs> Oh, now Rush is laughing, too. Hey, maybe it's just me, but I've got the feeling that you two are really digging each other. What can I say, Ted? You know, she puts the femme in feminazi. You asked Rush Limbaugh to spend the night at our house? Well, yeah. I mean, he has to get up at 6 in the morning to catch a plane, and after spending the afternoon with him, I just thought it would be rude to let him stay in a motel. Well, gee, from the way you all were acting on the radio, I'm surprised you're not getting a room together. <laughs> I 
hate to say it, but if I hadn't called in myself, he wouldn't have even been challenged. Oh, yeah, that was really intelligent, Madeline, bringing up that stupid story about scuttling. He obviously thinks it's funny, and I want him to know that I am out here, and someday his shorts are going to be mine. <laughs> Well, I've had enough. I'm going home. That is unless, of course, you've given Rush my bed. Oh, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Sweetie, I'm going to go with you. You sound terrible. Oh, I know. Listen, Georgie, I'm sorry, but I don't think I'm going to be able to take you to the prom tonight. I hope we can still be friends. <laughs> Listen, I have an idea. Why don't you uh, ask Rush to take you? That's it, Hartman. Just lay it out there real casual. See if she bites. Are you serious? Well, sure. I'm just going to stay in bed and watch an old NBA playoff game on tape. Of course, I'd rather go with Hartman. But if he can't make it, let's face it, you are excited about going to the prom with Rush Limbaugh. And you are a disgrace to yourself, your sex, and your country. Sad, isn't it? Obviously, some of his moonies got to her. She's one of the pod people now. Hey, Rush, old buddy, why don't you put your feet up here and get comfortable? Yeah. There yeah. you go. Can I get you a beer or the, the adult beverage of your choice? <laughs> Billy Jack, I'm fine. It's yeah. Billy Bob. He can call me whatever he wants to. Hey, Mr. Winballs, do you want to see our baby? Oh, uh, sweetheart, I don't think he's interested in seeing my sonogram. I would love to see it. See? There she is right here. And that's the umbiblical cord. That's how she gets sodies and candy. I believe that Rush Limbaugh is actually looking at a picture of my internal organs. Is there no end to this humiliation? Now, let's just hope that she turns out to be as beautiful and smart as her mother. I bet that's not all you hope. I'm probably glad I have this cold. I bet you hope it gets into my lungs and kills me. That's the thanks I get for inviting you into my home. As a matter of fact, now that I think about it, you and my youngest son bear a striking resemblance to each other. Could it be that this is not your first visit, Mr. Limballs? What am I talking about? Georgie's not even Elliot's real mother. It must be the fever. You know, Rush, uh, I couldn't agree with you more about how this country has just gotten carried away with this victim thing. I mean, you're just you're right on the money about no, Tanya Harding and Lorena Bobbitt and all of them. Okay, come on, help yourselves. <laughs> this is really nice. You, you really should not have gone to all this trouble. Rush, as you can see, I'm a little under the weather tonight. I wonder if you could do me a favor and sort of stand in for me with Georgie tonight. Red alert. Just tell me this is not a dream and where do I sign? <laughs> Hey, anything I could do to help, I'd be glad to. You hear that, Georgie? Ask her. No, honey, this is silly. Oh, come on, go ahead. Don't be shy. Okay. I know this is really stupid, but... Would you like to go to the prom with me? 